Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Yurki, and uh, thank you for uh, your leadership on this one. I also want to thank uh, our colleagues, uh, Phil Hogan and Carmen Vela, that are not here with us, but uh, they deserve all the, the, the credit for this work that was really an amazing teamwork. I wanted also to thank all the teams in the different DGs, uh, in the cabinets, for putting so much passion uh, into uh, this project. And I think that the involvement of all these DGs and commissioners uh, under the leadership of uh, Vice President Katainen shows that we are trying to move from uh, something that before was just like about pure research to basically shifting to a more operational way to show what's the effect of bioeconomy for farmers, uh, for foresters, for fishermen. Uh, and I think that's the future. I think that the Europeans want to know the effects. They want to know the impact. And I wanted to highlight three points about this story that we're telling you today. The first is that this is really a European story. The second is that we can create here an amazing opportunity to put people that normally are not on the spotlight of Europe in the spotlight. And uh, we really want to propose something that is pragmatic for Europeans. But let's start by the European story. I I've lived outside of Europe. And I always felt that when you talk about bioeconomy, it's really something that Europeans care about. And, and that is important because it's part of our identity. We like it. We care about it. And uh, this story today touches everybody touches everybody. I was looking at the numbers of the jobs that we create in this area, and 8% of the EU workforce works in these areas, of the circular economy, of the bioeconomy. And basically, it's about preserving the future. And as you know, this week, we had uh, really a wake-up call. Uh, we had this IPCC report that came to us. Uh, it was written by more than 91 specialists that just said, look, since the pre-industrial era, we have already increased one degree Celsius in temperature, and another 0 0.5 will come very quickly. So you guys have to move before 2030 if you don't want to have something very serious. So we have to use bioeconomy into that objective, the objective of really do something about our commitments on Earth. And, and the Vice President referred to changing materials, the, the example of the cement and the wood, that if you just change wood from cement, you can decrease the emissions. We can use forests, uh, soils as carbon sinks and absorb emissions. So that's really what that European story is about. And we have to be kind of assertive about it. We are the best in the world. We are the leaders of this story. And so this story story is part of the good things of what Europe does for you. The second is that the bioeconomy is for all of Europe. And here was the point that I think that there's an opportunity for people that were not on the spotlight to be in the spotlight. I'm talking about rural areas. I'm talking about people that are changing lives in the rural areas through the bioeconomy. And I thought, I mean, one of the uh, really good things about my job is to meet people that are doing these things. And uh, two years ago, I met uh, this um, uh, incredible woman uh, called Katia Bastioli that um, uh, basically created a company called Nova Monte near Sardinia, where there was a petrochemical industry that shut down. And so she just rehired 150 people that were from that petrochemical industry that closed. And today, I mean, I'm going to just show you. She basically uses this plant. This is a marginal plant. Uh, in Italian, it's a cardoon, a cardo in Portuguese, so cardo. And uh, this is a marginal plant. And with these, she does amazing things. I mean, she has created uh, compostable bags for waste. So you can use it at your place. Then she has also developed makeup for the ones. I just uh, tried it before getting here, so I'm not too bright. And uh, you know, you have to explain people. So from these, you can produce these things. And I thought that the Vice President Gatina will be probably a little bit jealous if I don't talk about this country. And so I found Metza in Finland that does this very good scarf out of wood. Imagine, this is made out of wood. And I wanted like, to, to give it to... Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
And, uh, and so I think this is the stories that we have to talk about. But for, furthermore, I think we have to be pragmatic. What do we want to do? So we want to create, a, a, that's very nice, that's very nice, a 100 million euro investment platform uh, to help the lower uh, risk of the private investors. So private investors today, some of them, they don't go to these places because they, uh, they think it's too risky. So what is the function of the public sector? Is to lower the risk, is to help them. So we have created, we are creating this 100 million euro platform to help them. So if it's too risky for them, we can help a little bit. We can have loans that are preferential to them. And then we'll have a pilot of 10 cities that will turn high value organic waste into new products. And that I think is where things happen. Today, the examples are cities. The future of the world will be about cities, about clean cities. And so we'll put the cities in the front. We'll put the cities telling these stories. So we have really to communicate better uh, with the examples because the reality is that a lot of people don't know what bioeconomy is. Uh, you know about it, you're interested about it, we are interested about it, but we have to communicate through these simple examples. And that's also what I think this strategy is about. So uh, thank you very much. And, uh, Looking forward to the questions. Thank you for this very tangible presentation.